Welcome to Mohobe Nuggets of Wisdom podcast. My name is Mumpulu Kiluruma Mohobe. Our objective is to enthuse, inspire, energize, and empower entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs of all stripes here in BW and beyond. We do so by inviting these entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs into our makeshift studio. Sometimes we call them to the restaurant, sometimes we go uh, to our studio and we ask them to share their experiential knowledge, their experiences and their expertise. And we ask them uh, as many questions as we can aimed at empowering you also as a viewer. Hello dear viewer, dear listener, my name is Mumpulu Kiluruma Mohobe. Welcome to another exciting episode of Mohobe Nuggets a Wisdom Podcast. We're going to talk about education. Uh, we have a guest, a young dynamic businessman uh, who is very, very much steeped in this field of education. Uh, he started early and he's doing very well and I'm sure he'll be more than happy to share, um, share his background. Tobo Katola. Welcome to this to the studio. Yeah, no, thank you so much, uh, yeah. Mokobi. I really appreciate it. Mm. Yeah. Now, would you care to tell the viewer your professional background, your education, and so on? Yeah. Uh, my name is Tobo Khatola. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm actually originally, my grandparents are from Lesotho, mm -hmm. but but Mobotswana, way back in the Anglo Boer war. And uh, so I haven't really been to Lesotho. Oh, okay. <laughs> so not, well, even once. not even once. Not even once. But most of our relatives are that side and South Africa also. Mm -hmm. So I was actually born and raised in Khaburoni, but uh, yeah. uh, my grandparents back in the So yeah, I started my education um, at the Rainbow School. I've been schooling there from primary school to secondary level. Mm. Then uh, I think the whole tutoring concept came, I started being um, uh, exposed to tutors at the uh, Form 4, because mm. at my Form 4 I was academically accelerated to write my Form 5, Kilimo Form 4. Yes. So my parents... Because uh, you're doing very well. Yeah, you doing quite well, teachers, yeah. quite well. Here. So that's where I got exposure to tutors and I did well, then I did my A-levels and uh, fortunately managed to study at the University of Pretoria. Mm -hmm. So I was admitted for actuarial science and I, it didn't go very well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it happened? actually humbled me. I, it, wasn't my, it wasn't my field, but it was quite difficult for mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of I, numbers involved. A lot of numbers, a lot of uh, insurance, mm -hmm. and I wasn't really passionate about it. Mm -hmm. So I ended up uh, transferring to do economics. After how many years? Uh, after a year, mm -hmm. after a year. I actually got uh, discontinued from the university, <laughs> but I reapplied and they took me for, for economics and business management. Mm -hmm. So that's where my journey really started. I started getting focused. Uh, I had a talk with my dad. He was saying, man, I can't be paying you for your fees for mm. you to go and play. Mm. Um, so I got a job in my second year as a tutor at the university because I was uh, very good at economics mm -hmm. and mathematics. Okay. So the university hired me as a tutor and I also worked for another tutoring agency in South Africa, the biggest tutoring agency in South Africa. Mm. Yeah, so I think that's where I got experience. This? this was in 2012. It's 2012. important I emphasize that because you're only 28 yes. and already you've... Uh, You've reached the pinnacle in Pina some ways. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I don't consider I've already reached, but I think yeah, you're right, getting there. You're getting there yeah. Yeah. So I got the job. I think that's where I got most of the experience as a tutor. Um, I was one of the only black people in the company. So I really just uh, watched and learned how they run the show, how they run the show. And then graduated in 2015, mm. looked for a job. There were no jobs, so I ended up just starting my own tutoring company and this is where I am today. Yeah, we have a bit of an elephant in the room in the sense that here you are in the cover of Forbes. Yes. And uh, you, it's a recent, uh, recent edition, I think it's the current one. Yes. Where yeah. you are a Forbes finalist. Before yes. we get into what we're going to discuss, tell them, tell the viewers how you ended up in the cover of Forbes. Yeah, well, I think we, um, la last year, late last year, I just, I just got encouraged by the Forbes magazine. I think uh, I started buying these magazines, the Forbes, the, um, uh, the Entrepreneur, 
you know, mm. just to spark up that dream. Mm -hmm. And then I recently learned that there's actually a Forbes for the, they select 30 under 30 uh, candidates from all over Africa. Mm -hmm. So I got nominated, most of my friends nominated me and I also nominated myself. Mm. And then uh, they selected just 30 of us. You know, there are some people from- You mean uh, continent wide? Continent wide, yes, mm. uh, yes. Uh, so Nigeria, you know, we're with the Nigerians, the South Africans. So the four of us, uh, it was myself, Nigel Amos, Tony, and uh, Newman mm. were the first Botswana to be in this list of uh, Forbes 30 under 30. Are you saying in Africa out of 30, we have four Botswana? There are four Botswana, yes. Isn't that remarkable? It's One country would send four. Yes, but I think uh, it, it's actually a first because most of the time it has been dominated by Nigerians and South mm. Africans. Yes. So you'll find Zimbabwe, there will be one, Uganda one, and then four or five Nigerians. I think we've been shy in the past to, to actually nominate ourselves nominate. or to show ourselves. Yes. Yeah, haven't you found that there's a tendency to be a bit uh, too modest? Yeah, I think also our culture plays a huge role uh, because we, we mistake both of, mm. you know, humility by now shying away. Mm. But we actually need to be more bold and take advantage of this. And, and tell me, how, wh wh what is the prize you get for being on, on the cover of Forbes? Wow, it's, it's, it's remarkable because you get opened up to worldwide markets. Mm -hmm. um, I recently got a business partner in Canada. Mm -hmm. So we have a Lion Tutoring application, which works like Uber for tutors. Mm -hmm. So in that application, um, somebody in Canada from the Forbes fraternity picked it up and we had two or three students uh, this past lockdowns mm. uh, in Canada that we tutor online. Wow. So it, it really opens up the markets, you know, there are these Forbes Africa, these Forbes Asia, North America, you know, all the continents. Let's talk about Lion Tutoring. Yeah. Um, when did you start it and how is it doing at the moment? Okay, we started Lion Tutoring in 2015. Mm. Like I said, after looking for a job with no success, Mm. And uh, there was no startup funding. I mean, I just had to bootstrap it, tutor mm. some students and get the money, go register the company, tutor more students, print out flyers. I remember the first flyers, we just had to cut them with mm. the scissors mm. and then we'll stop by Pakalani Circle, distribute those flyers. Our first year, we did a turnover of 289,000, which is wow. not significant. And uh, we're on track. Which is not insignificant. It's, yeah, yeah, at the time, I mean, without startup funding, uh, but uh, we are on track to do 10 million this year. Wow, yeah. wow, wow. Mm -hmm. And uh, how many pupils in how many countries? Uh, we are, right now we're in Botswana and South Africa, and recently also Canada. We have mm. some students online. Mm. I think the, the COVID has really helped us to open up Mm. Uh, you know, our innovation because now we can tutor students on Skype, Teams, mm -hmm. Zoom. So we have students in Canada. Mm. Uh, last year we had a thousand students uh, based in, in Botswana, just Haborone, Palapia, Francis Town. That's exciting. Yeah. The first nugget we want to talk about is the difference between literacy and education. How does education differ from literacy? Um, I think that is um, something we need to really dissect because we, we tend to usually think that uh, education is going to school, reading, you know, getting reading and writing, but those are actually two different concepts because uh, there are people that are actually unemployed, that are literate, that can write, that can speak the Queen's English, mm. uh, but they're unemployed. But unemployed or unemployable? And um, both, yeah. <laughs> I think okay. both. <laughs> okay, right. Unemployed. I think the more unemployed you are, you become unemployable. Okay, all right. <laughs> yeah, so I think um, education again now, mm. it's uh, it's different from literacy, mm. because I can be educated by this conversation that we have, gain knowledge. Uh, there are people that take uh, education in terms of six months courses, and they become more relevant. So I think that is where we need to dissect literacy and education. Education is something that you can use to even solve day-to-day -day problems. Mm -hmm. But literacy is just a skill of reading, writing, speaking good English, mm -hmm. having a degree or a certificate. Okay, let's now dissect deeper uh, into education. Why is it significant? Why is it important? Well, I think education is important because um, it allows you to be a master of your craft. Um, and I think as you become a master of your craft, you have to, I mean, 
Remokobi is a lawyer, but he needs to keep studying the current changes in his field. Um, I'm in education. I need to keep studying the, the changes in the syllabus to help my, sister, my students better. So I think uh, education helps you to be on top of your game all the time. Because what works 10 years back, two years back, even last mm. year, we started off the year last year without mm. COVID. Yeah. But now we had to educate ourselves on how do we live with the virus? How do we structure our HR systems? How do we structure our sales systems? Mm. How do we structure our, our business processes around the COVID? Mandela who said that education is, a, is an agent of change. I'm paraphrasing that education is a very powerful agent for change. Yeah. Yeah. Do you agree with that? No, I agree with that totally. Mm -hmm. I, I totally agree with that because uh, if you can't keep on top of the ball, you become redundant. Mm. I mean, like you're saying, some people will be unemployed and become unemployable yeah. because if your CV says three years doing nothing, or I want no casco, no hosana so and totally you become unemployable. Yeah, the cost yeah. of education is the subject I want us to cover quickly. Education, uh, there's a saying that if you think education is expensive, try ignorance. <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's a so, good word. Uh, yeah, so, so let's talk about the cost of education. What views do you have on that? Um, I think education would, I would rather co consider it as an investment the right education mm -hmm. because uh, it can become a cost if you are educating in the wrong uh, field. For instance, um, I always tell people that you know most of the jobs that we are training our job market for, they are already being replaced by robots. Um, I went into a SIPSI in South Africa when we went to register our branch. What's in, a SIPSI? Uh, SIPSI is like SIPA. Mm -hmm. hey, it's like SIPA this side, it's the company registrations uh, in South Africa. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. So I went there, there was only a security guard and an assistant. Mm. And there were just computers. So I was thinking, I, I was thinking back home where you have <laughs> hundreds of stuff in that mm. building. Maybe you went during the lockdown. <laughs> it, wasn't <laughs> it, wasn't, it was even before lockdown. Okay. Just computers, self-service. Uh, when you pay your annual fees, it's like depositing at the ATM. Mm. You just get there, you put your company registration number, mm. it, o it tells you how much you owe, you deposit the money, and then it prints out a statement for you. Mm. So I was seeing that uh, most of the jobs that we are actually training for are already being taken over by, by a technology, by robots. Can you give examples? An example would be also the bankers, the mm. banking industry. Mm. Um, like the tellers. Like the tellers. Mm. I think if you go to a net bank uh, in, South in Centen, you will find uh, a robot called Pepper. <laughs> <laughs> so you, that robot will just come up to you, facial recognize you, and then greet you by name. Hello, Mr. Mokobe, how can I help you? You'll tell the robot what you want, and it will help you there by the door. Mm. And already that robot doesn't fall sick, like uh, most people say, the ro it doesn't file for leave, it doesn't, mm. you know, it doesn't hide mm. So those are but some the, of the jobs that are get being corrupted taken. with viruses, can't it? It can. It, <laughs> it, it, it can. I mean, the human element is important, mm. but the robots are, are taking over the, most of the jobs. Okay. Mm. Now, still on the subject of the cost of education, um, you, you know, you, you want us to, to think of it as an investment, is that correct? Yes, sir. Using lion tutoring as an example, how is education an investment? Um, I think I'll just backtrack it to the days of my parents when they paid for my fees at mm. the university. Uh, I feel it was an investment really mm. because I, I'm here now, you know, taking care of the parents, taking mm. care of my family, my siblings, and you know, they can retire now relaxed. <laughs> they don't, don't have to. to retire. <laughs> <laughs> No, they, might, they might watch this show and, and say that yeah, that's our <laughs> <laughs> that's what we're looking for. Now we can we can go home and rest. Mm. So I think uh, even just backtracking to those days, um, it's an investment mm. because now they don't have to take care of anything. They know that whatever happens, they've mm. left somebody in the family. Are you not more of an exception than the rule? No, I don't. I think I'm just an ordinary oh. <laughs> uh, ordinary. Yes. But yeah. but you say. Most people can leverage their education to actually, not to the point of retiring their parents and their siblings, but certainly yeah. to the point of being uh, 
powerful contributors to their community. Yes, yes. yes. I mean, th that is one. Mm. But also just taking care of a family, taking care of the community, mm. it, it plays a huge role. I mean, if, if, you, if I'm unemployed one and I'm not a business owner, although the heart is there to take care of the community, to take care of the family, I can't do that because I need to find a way to get financial resources. So I think education, it, it really builds up now, pays back even to the future generations. I think this is very relevant in African societies where we have the phenomenon of the black tax. Yeah. Actually, two or three episodes ago, right here on this show, we talk about, you know, that we had a guest, Mr. Letchwani, talking about black tax. Mm. And to me, it seems to me like you're paying a lot of taxation, a lot of black tax. <laughs> not, not per se. Oh. I, I, I think, um, you know, with... There is a, a role that we need to play in our community. I mean, mm. uh, it, it is black tax. I mean, <laughs> there's yeah. no way we can, uh, we can run away from it. Yeah. I had actually had a friend um, uh, in South Africa, a, a white brother, and when he finished university, he had already been bought a house, a car fully paid off. Mm. So I think it's maybe the next generation that we'll see that mm. they won't have to pay black tax like <laughs> some of us. <laughs> like <laughs> Mm. Mm. Now, um, we want to talk about the, you, you hinted on the relevance of the education system. So the question that arises, what type of education is now relevant? Because you've already indicated some of our traditional education system is not relevant. Mm. And what the government maybe is doing needs to be improved upon. Yeah. So the question that arises is what education is relevant for now and for the future? Yeah. Mm. I think the first thing we need to look at is just the COVID. Mm. The COVID has exposed a lot of industries, mm. which some could be essential, some can be done away with. Mm. And uh, the, the, the winners of this uh, crisis are those who are in the technology space. We saw that uh, Jeff Bezos, he did a lot <laughs> yeah, because of Amazon. 20-25% or more increment yes Increasing the share prices value, yeah. yeah of Actually amazon is more than that. yeah mm. because now people are buying online people are selling online buying online we look at zoom mm. zoom just came in and, and already it was there in the in the new york stock exchange and it's, it's doing very well you know mm. facebook um has they actually introduced where you can sell your goods through facebook mm. so i think mm. those are some of the industries we need to look at i mean robotics programming uh, technology that is where the world is going to and I've seen a lot of schools uh, private schools um, even in Botswana they started to introduce programming at standard one standard one standard two standard three robotics you know they're mm. introducing simple coding where the students can work on Java C++ C sharp mm. uh, from an early age so I think the world is going there okay so Am I right in saying at Lion Tutoring, in terms of your programs, or you, you're not just looking at the traditional cur curriculum from, uh, from, from, say, the Ministry of Education? Are you able to tutor even beyond that? And other subjects, for instance, if somebody has an online course yeah. on a specific subject, or robotics or something, mm -hmm. are you able to assist? Yes, I think we, we started our, our services there from the government curriculum, which we know is the PSLE, JC, I, uh, BGCSE, mm. but we also introduced IGCSE. Mm. So IGCSE A-levels, there are certain subjects that are done in other countries that are not done here. Mm. So we'd have tutors uh, from other countries doing conducting the tutorial online. Mm. So we do have tutors doing uh, your programming, your robotics uh, from early ages. We have French tutors, Spanish tutors, guitar tutors, um, Afrikaans tutors, mm. but it doesn't have to be somebody here in Botswana. We have employees in South Africa, we mm -hmm. have employees all across the world who are in our database. Okay, with the advent of COVID, um, the debate about homeschooling has uh, exploded, like in America where parents are now saying, what's even the point of taking children to school? Do you see homeschooling becoming uh, a thing? And if so, how do you, how do you as learn tutoring come into the picture? 
Uh, homeschooling is, is becoming a, a, a huge thing, mm. actually. I think I've seen the response of Botswana, mm. where uh, children will be t sent to school, then there will be an outbreak of the virus, homeschooling. Mm. So, you know, I've seen that parents have now started to appreciate homeschooling. If you can remember the first lockdown, most of the private schools, they introduced the online learning. Mm. So I think that is sort of eased the parents to accept that there's actually work that can be done with a child and the goal of being interacting with the computer. So I think it's, it's becoming a thing. As Lion Tutoring, we even uh, give parents options where you can do it online mm. or the tutor can come to your home. So I see, I've seen a lot of parents, especially this year, 2021, they are allowing tutors to come to their home because they know I'd rather get exposure of five tutors coming at home than my child going into the combi, meeting with all those people, mm -hmm. uh, going to school, meeting with different children, different teachers, coming back already, you have met 200 people in one day. So I think uh, the let response is quite good. Let me ask you a cynical question. Should a parent just say, look at the amount I'm paying for school fees. Maybe for half of this, I can give to learn tutoring and maybe get a better <laughs> quality of education. Yeah, I think there's advantages and disadvantages. Yeah. Uh, the biggest disadvantage with our program is the parents have to purchase the books. Mm -hmm. It's not similar to, you know, at the school where they get borrowed the books, then they return the books. Mm -hmm. That is the only disadvantage. But in terms of costs, I've seen parents say we are more cost effective. Mm -hmm. But the impact is quite huge because it's one-on-one one -on -one sessions. Our group sessions are usually five students and below. So you see the student gets quite a lot of attention. We move with the student's pace. So if this week I'm doing quadratic equations with my student and they can't pick it up, I have to now spend the next week doing it again until they get it. Yeah. Because if they don't understand the quadratic equations, they won't be able to move to the next uh, chapter. Yeah. These days you just get um, maybe a secular a WhatsApp from a school saying, oh, it is suspected that someone who may have contacted someone <laughs> who may have had COVID was seen here. Then as a result of that suspicion, <laughs> we are shutting the whole <laughs> And then after two weeks, oh, someone some is rumored to have met room. someone with, and therefore we're closing again. Yeah. So given this unpredictability, wh wh where is the certainty? Where do you provide, do you, do you, do you provide the certainty for, for parents as loud tutor, tutoring, at least to make sure that there's no disruption in study, in education. Yes, yes. Because I think uh, we learned this on the second lockdown. The first lockdown caught us a bit off guard mm. uh, because it only took us a week for us to move all our lessons online. Mm. Second lockdown, it was, I, I, if I remember clearly, it was on a Thursday. Mm -hmm. The Friday morning, all our students had already migrated to having their lessons on Skype. Mm. And it's like our staff are also equipped enough if somebody's on contact tracing, I know two of our staff, they were on contact tracing, immediately they were working from home. Yeah. So I think it's something that, uh, you know, we have really taken the bull by the horns. Yeah. The students are even used to it. We have a student in standard one. She, she knows the routine, she knows the drill. Mm. If they say lockdown, she doesn't panic. Mm. She knows that tomorrow she has the laptop, mm. she does her lessons online. And then after the lockdown, she resumes uh, with her yeah, Twitter. No, okay. All right. Now, let me ask you about, um, uh, you know, the, the, this business of staying relevant. There's talk of STEM courses and so on and so forth. So what do you think students should do to remain relevant for the future, especially during this time in the light of 4IR and, 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 and things like that? Yeah. I think to, to stay relevant right now, even the parents can help. Mm. Uh, is to engage students. I've seen a lot of private institutions, even ourselves, who are offering robotics, mm. who are offering programming. Mm. They, I mean, they might not be tested at school because the school is maybe still trying to catch up. The curriculum is trying to catch up. But those are skills which in the future, after 10 years, they are going to be as uh, essential as English. I mean. Uh, every student needs to understand English, mm -hmm. you know, for them to stay relevant. Mm -hmm. But I, I suspect in the nec next 10 years, mm -hmm. or I predict in the next 10 years, programming, robotics, you know, you can't do without, without those. Mm -hmm. yes. Why do you think robotics are, are essential? I mean, is it going to get to a point where we won't need waiters and things like that? I, I, I'm just trying to imagine the future. 
um, as it is developing. And you obviously have looked at it more closely than us yeah. uh, because you're in the thick of it, you're in the field. Yeah. Is it getting that? that yeah, you, you don't have to imagine uh, Remoho, just, just go to Senti. Mm. I've seen a restaurant where there are no waitresses and waiters. I'm sorry to the waiters here, yeah, but <laughs> this, it's literally self-service. You just get there, there's, you'll find there's a device, mm. which um, I believe it's something like Alexa. Mm -hmm. it, 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 you'd communicate with the device what you want, mm. and immediately there will be, the service would come. It will come in a robot, it will give you the, the food that mm. you're eating, and then you tap your card mm -hmm. and you pay. So. Wow. I, I don't know the kitchen. Uh, mm. Maybe the kitchen, Leon, it's just people. But uh, in terms of waiters, waitresses, you'd find already the, mm. the jobs are being taken. And now it's up to the restaurant owner to be now uh, on top of the game when it comes to programming, when it comes to fourth industrial revolution. Mm. Mm. Okay, let me digress a little and ask you about the choice of a lion. Why did you choose the king of the jungle as your symbol? Well, um, <laughs> so yeah. I think it came, it was, you have to it, translate all that. it was inspired by that, yes, uh, our totem actually is a lion, mm. uh, our tribal totem, uh, but um, I just like the, the character of a lion, it's, it's not the fastest mm. in the jungle, the cheetah is, it's not the tallest, the elef I mean the giraffe. the giraffe is is mm. not the biggest the, the elephant, elephant is eh? mm. but it's the king of the jungle mm. so I, I really like our students thinking of themselves as the king of the jungle mm. that dominance I've supported some of our students who are taking part in rugby mm. in Livingston and every time they get into the rugby pitch they think of themselves as the lion mm. you know some in in music uh, some in arts. So they always come with that to dominate, mm. to be, uh, to have pride, the good kind of pride, mm. and to just be the best in 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 their field. Yeah. Mm. So it's really about the attitude, the attitude, well, yeah. the, the, the winning attitude, that sort of belief that you are, you are the um, the champion, you are the boss. Yes. I yeah. think that is the, the uh, yeah. Mm. Now, in terms of um, um, job losses that are coming that everybody knows job losses are a problem. I think the unemployment rate is rumored to be anywhere between 25 and 40 percent mm. for the youth. What is Lion Tutoring doing or what are you doing to address that? Is there anything we can, that can be done? Yes. Mm. Um, we last year had uh, more than 300 employees mm. across our branches of which 10 percent of those are full-time staff. Um, so we have uh, salespeople, we have accountants, we have uh, we had legal officer, mm. you know, we had somebody managing our social media and our tutors. Mm. So Lion Tutor is playing a huge role in uh, curbing uh, the high unemployment rate. Mm. The first preference that we give in our recruitment, we give preference to Botswana, mm. especially young Botswana, uh, because we understand that there's a there's a gap that needs to be bridged between the teachers and the students. Mm. This morning we had a prize giving in Mokoditane um, Primary. They did very well. We were sponsored by FNB Foundation. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of the teachers said that they really appreciate the tutor because the tutor is like an older brother or mm -hmm. an older sister. Mm. So you'll find what about school is some, most of the time. Social aspects. Social media. Social media. <laughs> yes, you, uh, drugs, you mm. know. Mm etc etc and if you have an older brother there to hold a hand and say man mm. listen this is not the way to go it, it really curbs a lot and then uh yeah like i'm saying we we employed 300 uh people it's it's quite sustainable jobs um our payroll hit two million last year we paid two million in salaries huge, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so mm. i think we are really doing our part mm. um in in hiring or curbing the, the unemployment rate yes and um what about other entrepreneurs out there? Uh, what did it take? You are age 28 and you're already uh, doing very well. What would be your message to other entrepreneurs who are struggling, who are on the verge of giving up? What message do you have for them? Yeah, it's just to, just to keep focused because I think um, our system has really crippled us. Uh, I mean, from primary school, we are paid for school fees. 
you're at the university, you are paid to learn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's something that I think... And it's probably one of the few countries in the world that... In the world, yes. That do uh, that. Yeah, yeah. I had a friend from U.S. telling me that, you know, <laughs> we don't have that mm. here in the States, you know. So we are paid to go to school. And then after that, you are given internship again. So I think some of and these things we need to... You're given a loan by and then you're CEDA. given a loan by CEDA, YGF, etc. So I think uh, those are some of the things that are really crippling us. We need to be vigilant of. Mm. Uh, in South Africa, when I was a student, I had three jobs. Mm. I was a salesperson for a restaurant, card loyalty. Mm. I was tutoring in the university. I was tutoring in the private company. So I had to find a way to balance all of that together with my studies. Mm. And I think it's something that um, uh, our young people need to learn how to serve. Mm. Because it's only after four years of being in the education industry that I started my own business. Mm. But uh, our young people, they don't have the spirit of serving. They don't mm. want to serve, work under Mr. Muhobi, get all of the experience, and then at the right time, open my own. But they just come one year, they want to open mm. their own thing. It doesn't do very well. So I think we well, need... We need to serve. Can we blame our politicians because they go on the uh, on the Freedom Square and they promise jobs, jobs, jobs. They promise free this, free that, freebies, freebies, <laughs> freebies. Isn't there isn't there a point at which you say, uh, our at a political level, mm. the thinking has to change? I think uh, I think they they are also <laughs> salespeople. <Yeah. laughs> I think I think of politicians as salespeople. Mm. They need to sell to make the votes. They have to feed their families. Yeah, yeah. So who can blame them? But yeah. at the end of the day, it's your responsibility to see what you consume. Mm. If you sit there at the Freedom Square and say, if I select this political party or this politician, my life will be better. Mm. Or is it up to you to say, what skill has God given me? Yeah. Moses was given a stick. Mm. And God asked him, what do you have in your hand? I think that is a scripture I read a lot yes. when I was unemployed, uh, when I just came from the university. I was close to depression because my dad was putting me under pressure. Mm. I had to... I was really depressed, but I read that scripture and God was asking Moses, what do you have in your hand? Mm. And he said, it's just a stick. Mm. And God used that stick to free the children of Israel to perform the miracles. Yeah. So God asked me, what do you have? And I said, I just have this degree and tutoring experience. Mm. And that is what I, I, I've been using. So I think the politicians, they're just trying to feed their families. They're doing the best they can. <laughs> they're trying. So yeah. we need to make sure we consume the right and take I ownership. I actually think that uh, our early political leadership had the right message. Because if you recall, uh, we had the policy of Ipe Lekheng as in yeah. self-reliance yes, yeah. from the first president. Yeah. That was a big thing. So I, I happen to think, I don't know if you agree with me, mm. that if we can revive the spirit of Ipe Lekheng, not in terms of the Papa Ta or Magunya, yeah. <laughs> which, which is this, this thing that we have now. It's not really Ipe yeah. But in the original sense, we should be on our feet, we should support ourselves, you know. Yeah, I think Botswana have always been enterprising. Mm. I mean, if you, you can take it even before that to the concept of Mafisa. Mm. My, my grandmother used to tell me what Mafisa explained to me that I, as you can, as Mr. Bogomi, borrow me the cow, mm. then I milk it and I try whatever offspring I get, it's mine. Yeah. I think Botswana have always been enterprising. Mm. They've mm. always been, I, I'm sure you can attest yeah. to say, We've always been hard-working mm. people. Yeah. Uh, Even around Letsema, where you get families that are not doing so well, yes. joining the world to do families, to harvest. To harvest. And then after the harvest, they take a portion a of portion that. A portion of it. Yeah. That it's is always enterprising. Like, yes. We built a university. I mean, our grandfathers built the university. Motulimutukomo. And I think that was enterprising enough. But mm. I, I just don't know where we lost it as, yeah. a, as a people. But we really need to pick it up because... Right now, there's the COVID. Mm. And the COVID, if it catches you flat-footed, I mean, the economy is... It wipes you out. Yeah. yeah. I was just reading the other day that KBL is closing. KBL is closing. devastating. Yeah. Or at least closing for now. The major mining also deal. Mm. It's, uh, yeah. Now, let me ask you the obvious question. We may have covered aspects of it. How is Lion Tutoring positioning itself for 4IR, Fourth Industrial Revolution? Yeah. Uh, there are some secrets I'll, I'll, I'll just disclose. Mm. Um, there's actually a, a program, there's a, a device called Alexa. Mm -hmm. 
So that is what we are actually looking at in the long run, to have something that is similar to Alexa, mm -hmm. uh, being a tutor. So that is why I always tell our tutors that you need to position yourself in the fourth industrial revolution. Uh, content. Right now, the biggest people that will win are the developers and the content creators. Because if you create content, fourth industrial revolution, it works with uh, machine learning. It works with learning us as people. That if a student is lacking in this concept, mm. they are likely also lacking in A, B, C, D. So as a programmer, you are going to program that device or that tutoring device mm -hmm. um, uh, to study the student's weaknesses and what they might also have be challenged in going forward. Mm. So I think uh, those are things that uh, we're planning in the next 10 to 20 years, having something like Alexa. And we had a phone call chat where we called our, our support in Russia. Mm. We spoke to that, uh, I would call it a person for now, for more than 30 minutes. And it was like speaking to a person, mm. but it was a robot. Uh -uh. We only picked it up after the conversation, after it helped us that, uh -uh, this thing is a robot. <laughs> Were you but writing or just <coughs> verbally talking? Speaking. Uh -huh. And it was real time. You mm. see the way we are speaking now. Yeah. It even had those gestures like, oh, no, I'm sorry for that, sir. Yeah. It even had that <laughs> sympathy to it and... You know, it had those kind, uh, but I think even Siri on uh, the iPhone, it yeah. has those kind of gestures. Eh? Siri is, so a bit, uh, is a bit, is a bit, but he responds to, to it's like a, he responds. It's, it's like a human. Yeah. So I think I as, as the world is moving there, we mm. need more content creators, mm -hmm. we need more developers. Those are the people that are going to win in the fourth industrial revolution. And us as Lion Tutoring, I mean, going forward, we developed our app, mm -hmm. uh, which is like Uber for Tutors in-house, together with uh, Afro Agile Soft Company. It's a Botswana-based company. Mm -hmm. So we are also Pusha BW. We well, actually brought them into our office. They are actually housed with us. Mm. And during the night, we are running code. We are, mm. we are working on the code, working on the code. During the day, the clients are playing with the code. Mm. And then right now, we're even getting to other time zones. Mm -hmm. Like we have students in Canada. So a student in Canada, um, 7 o'clock in our time is around 11 yeah. in, in their time. Mm. So we're playing around other time zones. And it's incentivizing us to come to the office at 4 o'clock in the mm. morning. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. late. Tell me, uh, t just take a minute to explain to the viewer how exactly the app works. Maybe you, you can do a small mini demonstration, but yeah. just how does it work? How can they take advantage of it? So this app is, a, is an Uber for tutors, uh, mm -hmm. basically. So Uber has is, is disrupted the taxi industry. Mm -hmm. We want to disrupt the education industry. Mm -hmm. So we load our tutors all over the world. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got people in Canada, we've got people in South Africa and Botswana and Zimbabwe. We load them onto the app. Mm -hmm. Then when I, as, uh, if you need a tutor, as a student, as a parent, mm -hmm. it will pick your location. And then after it's picked your location, you will tell it which subjects you need help with. Mm. Math, science, uh, Setswana. Then it will load robotics. tutors. <laughs> or, or robotics. Yeah. Or robotics. Yeah. Or robotics. Yeah. It will load the tutors for you mm. uh, like this. So you can see it has picked that we are here in CBD. Mm. So it's loaded Is the it tutors. Mokobe Plaza? It, it or Black. Mokobe, it Mokobe, Mokobe Plaza. Yes. Yeah. Then it's loading tutors in phase two who are staying in phase two because there's no residential area here. So the nearest is phase two. The nearest residential area is phase two. Oh. So once it does that, you can click on the tutor's face. Mm. It will open the profile. Because mm. as a parent, you want to know who this person is, the star ratings. Mm. So after you've done using the tutor, you the give... The star ratings based on previous... Yes, uh, reviews. Uh, reviews, yeah. yes. Mm. So if uh, you see this one, she's three stars. Yes. But she's done metallurgy, mm. and it will give you her full profile. Mm -hmm. So you can select the tutor and view our packages. Mm. So it will tell you that there's a do you package. Do get a chance to do a background check on the tutor? Yes, mm. as we do that in the back end. Okay. So um, we, we do police clearance reports, mm -hmm. etc. We also work with other um, HR companies like Career Pool. Then they do a full background check. I suppose even the, 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 you know, the parent can do independent, independent background check on Facebook or whatever. They can also do that. Mm. Not of Ibile Botswana is a very small place. Mm. So you're the ah, you wanna have Yes. In South Africa I know that we actually put a lot of funds 
in working with PNET. They do a total background check. Mm. They even check the qualifications okay. from the university. Okay, what then, else? Can then after you do that, after mm. you book your tutor, it mm. will show you the different packages. Mm -hmm. This one is going for 3.6. The tutor comes to your place two times a week. There's mm. another one that is going for 2.4. It's a sibling package, mm. so the, the siblings can share the cost. Mm. Then you check out. When you check out, it will give you the refund policy, mm. and then you just take out your, your credit card or your debit card, and then just like you buy online, you yeah. put your card details, CVV number, you mm. pay, and then we send the tutor to your house. Okay. There. Is it payment upfront? Payment up front, yes. You don't have a credit facility? Uh, we don't have a credit facility. <laughs> and you want to <laughs> keep it that way? We'll keep it that way. <laughs> okay. Okay. I think some of our clients who've been with us for quite a while mm. would give them discounts. Okay. Yeah. You mentioned the refund uh, policy. What is it? So um, according to what we're using with uh, the banking app that we're using, uh, NBFIRA requires that there's a refund policy. Mm. So those are some of the things that uh, anti-money laundering, uh, measures they put in place. Mm -hmm. So we use a payment gateway in Botswana and South Africa called DPO PayGate. Mm -hmm. So those DPO PayGate, they make it necessary that there's a refund policy, a strong mm -hmm. refund policy. Our website is secure. Mm -hmm. Since you're going to be putting your card details, mm -hmm. you don't want hackers to, you know, get the, <laughs> the, the yeah, hands, hands on, on your it, millions yeah. there. So mm -hmm. <laughs> we make sure that, you know, the, it's, it's 3D secure, mm -hmm. you know, there's a SSL certificate so mm. when you go on our website, you're secure. What is that, SSL? The SSL certificate is just, you know, the, I'll, I'll just make it simple for you, sir. Yeah. You know, most of the sites, it says HTTP. Yes. Those are not secure. Uh -huh. So you need to go to HTTPS. Uh -huh. It means that it has a secure SSL certificate. Uh -huh. So it's something that you pay on, on an annual basis, and then they make sure that your, your website is secure. Okay. Mm. Now... Um, and NBFIRA, it's mm. a requirement that uh, before you sell online, it's a requirement with them that it has to have an SSL okay. certificate. Yeah. All right. Before you ask me a question, which is a feature of this show, project into the future, five, ten years, what do you see Lion, Lion tutoring going in terms of numbers, in terms of growth? Uh, God willing, we need to have scaled this company in all the countries. Um, we, we, we already are successful with that Botswana, South Africa, Zimbabwe, and also Canada. But we, we see ourselves in all the countries mm. because it's a very scalable business model. We don't have to be in those countries physically. Like right now, we're using Facebook. Mm. But Mark Zuckerberg, if you ask him Botswana, he'll think it's a fruit. Or doesn't even <laughs> he know. Doesn't that. even know this. He but knows South Africa. <laughs> but he's taking all the money. I yeah. mean. Uh, if you are boosting your posts and all of that on Facebook, he's on getting that. a lot of money. So mm. we see as ourselves also um, getting into all those countries, uh, scaling our app. Uh, like, you know, we need to be competitive mm. uh, in, a, in a global market. So that's why we see Lion Tutoring. Have we, have we considered uh, venture capital funding or angel investing? We to have. To help you uh, scale. We have, but in Botswana, it's, it's, it's a bit rough. You know, we don't have much of those. But uh, it's something we've really well, considered. Talk to me after this. Talk <laughs> we'll to me talk after, after this. this if, yeah, if it's something you're seriously considering, I yes, can sir. link you up with uh, people in the right. I'm also an angel investor myself. Yeah, we'll okay. have a chat. You can ask your questions. Here. Okay, <laughs> so I'm interviewing. No, I think um, I just wanted to ask. I've seen that Mr. Mohobi is a very spiritual man, mm -hmm. and I've been privileged to meet your family and tutor your children. Yeah. And I've seen that you have a very strong uh, spiritual in the Christian uh, background. And I just wanted to ask, how does that influence the person that you are, the businessman that you are? I think it's central because I always talk to the youngsters about the triangle of success with the bottom being the desire or the dream, with the side being the faith, the belief that you can achieve through God's help, and then the side being execution or action. Mm -hmm. So there's always a triangle involved. Yes. So part of this pillar of faith has to do with your religious faith. Yes. And I'm talking here about the he Hebrews 11 type of faith, uh, where yeah. faith is defined as the you know substance of, of things, things hoped for, hoped for. And, and, and things unseen. unseen yeah. And I'm just paraphrasing there. Mm. And then where there's actually towards the end of that chapter a summary of uh, heroes, biblical heroes. Some of them flawed characters, 
some of yeah. them imperfect human beings like yeah. us yeah. made mistakes people like Samson mm. people like uh, Barak mm. I don't know I don't mm. know if you know about him mm. people like that are mentioned in the Bible who have really been quote unquote scoundrels scoundrels uh, yeah. <laughs> in some ways before they found their faith before mm. they they tend to God mm. uh, and even after they tend to God they had a, yeah. uh, like Samson kept going back going to, back in, mm. to the Vil- Philistine women uh, mm. even <laughs> even against his mother's wishes mm. but my point is this that despite those imperfections despite those flaws mm. if you just have that faith that indomitable faith mm. you can get places and and if you look at the Bible for what it is mm. it's a book on entrepreneurship yeah I've always said to the youngsters that look if you target two books as yeah. a start uh, the book of Ecclesiastes uh, the book of Proverbs, Proverbs yeah. you've got to cover <laughs> yeah, that's a manual <laughs> yeah. on entrepreneurship mm. it covers every aspect it talks about yeah. money it talks about even signing surety ships yeah it, it even explains on actual investments if you take the time to 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 learn yeah. so I believe that the Bible is a book on entrepreneurship so mm. it has mm. played a pivotal role yeah. for me as an entrepreneur and mm. I still dig into it as a source of inspiration mm, yes mm, mm. and the last question from my side would just be uh, family um, mm. uh, where, d- where is the line between work family how do you there's balance no, there's no line there's no balance <laughs> I, I, I don't like the idea of uh, work life balance because mm. it implies equal proportions of things I like the idea of uh, work life harmony mm-hmm. that things blend together you might have a tiny piece of this and then with this the same way as you, you, you cook a cake, the ingredients don't have to balance. But, yes. but you will know as a good, uh, as a good baker uh, that just a tiny little t- bit of sugar uh, and then a big amount of this and a big amount. Am- so it doesn't yes. have to balance. So mm. I don't believe in uh, work-life balance mm. or family work-life balance. Mm. I believe in harmony. harmony. So I try to involve my family wherever possible. Mm. It's a work in progress. Sometimes I win, sometimes I lose. Yeah. Sometimes I think they are with me. Other times <laughs> I think hey, I might be alone here. Yeah. So you I'm, never I'm know. I'm asking because I have a, <laughs> a, a, a three-week-old daughter. Mm. <laughs> it's my first daughter, well, so I'm still we'll figuring it out. We'll <laughs> compare notes. We'll, we'll come chat and uh, we'll compare notes. But yeah. involve them early. Get them interested in reading and learning. If you are a reader like me, try and interest them. Mm. 90% of the time, they won't care about about <laughs> all that. They think you're wasting <laughs> their time. But yeah. somewhere, somewhere along the line, mm. some of them will pick on and, and be yes. interested. Because I, I won't say which. Uh, I won't. I won't mention names mm. for fear of being ostracized during a family a dinner. Family dinner. <laughs> but I already see that there are others who are taking an interest, mm. and I see that there are others who have no interest. Mm. What can mm. you do? Mm. Okay. Yeah, those, those are my questions. Yeah. Okay. Great. Mm. You have to look at that camera there. You see it? It's over oh. there. Mm-hmm. And say to that young entrepreneur, leave them with something inspirational, mm. something motivational. You've already made it to the cover of Forbes. You own your own business. You employ over 300 people. So mm. m- to that entrepreneur, they might think you've reached to the top, the, the, the pinnacle. <laughs> but you and I know you're just getting started. started. <laughs> but to give them a few words of inspiration. Yeah, no, I, I think first of all, just to thank uh, Mr. Mohobe for this opportunity. But I just want to um, motivate somebody that, you know, uh, keep on keeping on. I think as cliche as it is, as uh, simple as it is, just keep on keeping on. Right now, there's a lot of distractions. There's COVID, there's uh, this and that. There are so many excuses that we can actually think of but you know the world is our oyster um you know you, if you're in botswana you can you can do business with somebody in addis ababa you can do it so business with somebody in 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 new york i mean the world is ours for us to play in and you know keep motivating ourselves you know i always watch uh, mr mohobi's nuggets of wisdom i was watching one before i came here with uh, mr ramachandran mm-hmm. of the party it was very in uh, insightful and you can see these are just normal people like us you know they're our fathers they're our uncles you know but they they've walked the roots and it's up to us to make sure that we learn from them and apply that not reinvent the wheel all over uh, again so i think that is my message to somebody at home thank you very much okay now before we part you have to share your contact details detailed contact details addresses even on social media, media so that people can 
take advantage of your services. Yes, sir. Mm. Uh, so at Lion Twittering, we are based here. Our head office is just behind Mukobe Plaza by Central Square. Uh, it's uh, plot 54354, uh, unit, unit 2. And then we have a branch in Khaburone, Maruapula, and Pakalani. Uh, but we do home calls, so even in Francis Town, Maung, Khansi, you can benefit from us. Our numbers are 316-4276, that's 316-4276. Social media, all are uh, it's at Lion Tutoring. At Twitter is at Lion underscore Tutoring. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. You've been a wonderful guest. Mm. You're, you're a smooth operator. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, sir. Okay. Yeah.